Marshall Goldsmith, author of What Got You Here Won't Get You There. Well, I just wrote a story about this in Harvard Business Online. Now, I'll give you a few tips. On American Airlines alone, I have 9.5 million frequent flyer miles. I'm the highest level flyer on United. I've got a gold card on British Air, yada, yada, yada. I fly constantly. A few tips. Number one, forget where you've been and be where you are. This is a Buddhist tip. One of the worst things you can do when you travel is focus on what time is it in Kentucky? What time is it where I started? Who cares? You're not there, you're here. Another guideline is force yourself to sleep. And I find it's very handy. I wear the little things I put over my eyes. I put the blanket over my head. Go to sleep. I sleep on the airplanes. By the way, the other one I always use, very bizarre looking. On a long flight, I always put the blanket over my head when I sleep. What it does is, you see, I speak constantly as a, for my job. Well, if you fly on an eight-hour flight and you sleep, you breathe deeply, that dry air hits the back of your throat and you get a sore throat. If you put the blanket over your head, it holds in your body moisture and you don't get a sore throat. And you know what I found? Very few people talk to you when you have the blanket over your head. In fact, sometimes the people sitting next to you leave. <laughs> it's all good, right? <laughs> so you just put the blanket over your head, you sleep, and then uh, don't drink on the airplane. The only time I drink is if I'm on an eight-hour flight and I want to sleep. I have one or two glasses of wine before I go to bed for a long period of time. But in general, don't drink on the airplane. Uh, exercise when you get off the plane, if you can. And the other thing is just make peace with what is. I, and also, I eat before I get on the plane. I don't eat on the plane. If you eat on the plane, two or three hours gets blown while they're slowly bringing food back and forth, and you have this sort of used plate sitting in front of you there for a half hour, you know. And the airports, everybody complains about flying. Number one, almost nobody's flown more than me. How many days have I missed because of flying in 30 years? One. So the system works better than people like to give it credit for. I, I, I almost always get to where I'm going, right? So the system actually works. People complain about the food. Don't eat it. You don't eat the food, nobody's going to make you. It doesn't cost that much. And the one thing that has gotten better is the food at the airport. Food at the airports is 20 times better than it was. I flew 30 years ago. The food was hideous 30 years ago. You had no choice. It was overpriced. Much better today. So make the best of it. I think a lot of it is just your attitude. Be where you are and make peace. If you don't want to travel, don't travel. If you're going to travel, don't whine about it. Oh, the other thing is... I have to say, I get annoyed by very little in life. One thing I do find that even annoys me is people being rude to flight attendants. The plane is late. They're yelling at the flight attendant. It's not the flight attendant's fault. They can't make the plane take off. You know, shut up. Just sit there and, you know, read a book. Bring a book. That's another good thing. Bring something you want to read. Bring a book. Sit there. Make peace. It is what it is. You don't have to annoy everyone around you. Just shut up. Right? Just go with it. And if you do that, it tends to work a lot better. I went to Africa. One thing that helps me in a very odd way. In 1984, I went to Africa with the American Red Cross Famine Relief Campaign. And I watched a lot of people starve to death. And I came home, you know what I said? Don't complain because the airplane's late. There are people out there starving to death. Don't complain because the airplane's late. Every, it sounds kind of trivial, but every time I get on that airplane, you know what I think? Who cares? How serious is this? I'm not starving to death. I'm not going to die here. Why am I wasting my life getting angry about this stuff? If you can't control it, make peace with it. Well, I'll tell you there's one way in my field that's helped a lot, and I've got a good friend named Cal Wick who's put together this follow-up system. A lot of what I do in coaching is follow-up. They've got some really great electronic follow-up systems that people have developed. Uh, who did you talk to? What did you learn? What are you going to do about it? There are these ongoing sense of reminders and follow-up, and it works really, really well if people do it. And again, it's a really positive use of technology to help people get better. Well, I mean, I think new technology is part of life, and one of the keys for being a leader of the future is technological savvy. Most of what I learn is, goes back to basic Buddhist philosophy of accept what is. Uh, the past is the past. We can all have these little 
nostalgic longing, longings for the past, but you know what? It's gone. Now I have a 61 Corvette, which is a beautiful car. Just beautiful, white with a red cove, you know, very spiffy looking. Everybody talks about how great the cars were in the past. No, they weren't, they were awful. They broke down all the time, their brakes were terrible. You can buy a $12,000 car today, it's far better than any car you could have bought in the past. We just have these memories about the past as if it were this wonderful time. Well, in the past, people forget, we used to have things like racism and sexism, and we had a lot of things in the past that were not so wonderful, that today they're much better. Now, those kind of things are much better than they used to be. So I think the main thing is make peace with what is, and you are where you are. So you're here now. So now we have lots of technology, so make peace with lots of technology. On the other hand, to me, what's not an acceptable option is to say, well, I don't like that stuff. That stuff is part of life. Yeah, that's, that's, that stuff is part of life. You gotta make peace, you, you know, it's there, everybody's using it. You've gotta learn how to use technology or else you're just lost.